My new fear, now that COVID has subsided, is being pushed onto the subway tracks. I don't know if you guys get our news here in Nashville, you know? The Nashville Tribune or the Nashville Inquisitor. I'm not sure what your paper is called. But we're pushing each other on the subway tracks. And the big problem is you don't know who's going to push you. If it was one person, we could strategize around that individual. But it could be anybody. And I'll tell you what the answer isn't asking each person on the platform if they're thinking about pushing. Because I saw a guy who looked suspicious and I said, sir, you don't look right. Are you thinking about pushing? He goes, I wasn't before you mentioned it. But to be honest, now that you brought it up, it sounds like it might be refreshing. Yeah, guys, it's pushing season. So I just assumed I'm getting pushed, you know. Every time I'm on the platform, I get in a stance. <laughs> Knee slightly bent, head on a swivel. You know, good form, getting ready to get pushed. Because I feel like if I get pushed, a lot of the trains are delayed. I can pop back up. Now I'm in that guy's head, you know? <laughs> so no one talks about the pop-up. You're ready to get pushed. And you get pushed and you pop back up. It shows that guy. I'm resilient, right? It's just gonna push me in front of a train, dog. Am I relating to some of the younger people that way? Maybe, I, should I say dog at the end of the jokes? It's just, I'm trying to, I'm trying to relate to the Gen Z's. So I'm on the platform, knees slightly bent, head on a swivel, ready to get pushed. I see a guy now, he's a waiter at one of the clubs I work. I go, hey man, what's up? How was your pandemic? He goes, pretty good. I go, are you going back to work soon? He goes, I don't do that anymore. I sell Bitcoin now. <laughs> he goes, do you know what Bitcoin is? I go, I don't think anyone actually knows what Bitcoin <laughs> is. He goes, well, let me explain it to you. And about five minutes into the explanation, I was like, I'd rather you just push me onto the tracks. <laughs> So now I'm taking Lyft, and uh, I know you guys probably don't take Lyft, you know, because you guys have cars. I'm sorry, I'm sorry trucks. I'm sorry. I don't like Lyft, you know. I like to put in where I'm going. I want Lyft to give me the price and how long it's going to take to pick me up. And Lyft initially does that, but then they start negotiating, and I don't like that. They're like, hey, Mike, instead of picking you up in four minutes... How about we knock a dollar 75 off and we pick you up in 22 minutes? Would that be cool? No, Lyft, that would not be cool. I'm in a dangerous neighborhood. I might not be alive in 22 minutes. Well, how about we knock $4 off and we send you a car with a driver who may or may not be drunk? You might have to actually drive. How about we knock $8 off and we just send you a guy, no car? I go, is this even Lyft anymore? This feels like Grindr. This feels like a gay hookup app. And I am not gay. But I do love a discount. So. I guess it's decision time for me. And how much feedback does Lyft need? I'm flying out of LaGuardia, which is one of our airports in New York. I fly out like at 6 a.m. I get to the airport, my phone's blowing up. I'm like, who's calling me this early? Who's texting me? It's Lyft with a bunch of questions. How was the ride? Rate the driver, review the ride, give him a tip, give him a compliment. I'm like, oh my God. I wanted a ride to the airport. I didn't want to become a foster parent. How much work is this? So I just did it old school, verbally. I go, Farik. his name was Farik. I say to him, I go, Farik, four out of five stars. He got me to the airport, 
beautifully, but you were yelling at your wife in Farsi the entire trip. And I feel obligated to tell you that yelling is toxic and problematic. It's no longer ethnic. It is now toxic and problematic. Have you guys been flying during the Pandesi? The Pandas? The Pandas. But all my flights have been delayed because they're cleaning and sanitizing the plane. That's what they say. We're cleaning and sanitizing every part of the plane. And it's like, can you get there 15 minutes early to clean and sanitize? They go, no, we're cleaning and sanitizing. That's the reason for our delays. Nobody overslept. We're cleaning and sanitizing every part of the plane. So I get on the plane and I head to the emergency row. That's where I sit, I'm a hero. And there's crumbs in my seat. So I go to the flight attendant, I go, did you clean and sanitize the plane? She goes, we cleaned and sanitized every part of the plane. I go, what'd you clean it with, cookies? <laughs> and then I was gonna ask for seat reassignment. If you're not comfortable in the emergency row, you guys know that you can do that. You can ask for a seat reassignment. But have you ever asked for seat reassignment? They get real mad. You get more support asking for gender reassignment than you do for seat reassignment. I don't want you to think that I don't follow the rules. I do follow the rules. My problem is when someone is trying to exert power over me. I don't like that. If it's just the rules, I'll follow them. But when someone's trying to exert power, I buck. Example, I'm flying out of John F. Kennedy Airport. It's one of the airports we have in New York. So I'm, uh, I'm taking my little bag, you know. I never check luggage. I have five outfits like this. <laughs> so I take my little bag. Before I even get close to the woman, she goes, you're gonna have to check it. You're gonna have to check that. You will have to check it. And I go, but it's my emotional support bag. I have things in there that I need for emotional support. I watch you guys let people take dogs and pigs and chickens onto the plane. I would like to take my emotional support bag on. She goes, sir, that's not real. I go, apparently, miss, you don't know that much about mental health. Because it's very real. Now, I have a letter from my doctor. And I gave her the letter and she read it and she goes, this letter is fake. And I go, I know, I'm a liar. That's part of my disability. I need my emotional support bag. I have things in there for emotional support. She goes, there's a metal contraption next to the door. If you can fit your bag in that metal contraption, you could take it on the flight. So I try, guys, like 20 times, and it's not fitting. Yet I know that it will fit in the overhead compartment. This is a setup. So I have to take my bag back to her, defeated. And she goes, I'm very sorry, but like I said, you're gonna have to check your bag. I go, I don't think you are very sorry. I think you're quietly celebrating. And then there was a joke, you know, there was a joke to be made, so I made a, I made a joke. I go, uh, I know this is John F. Kennedy Airport, but you're treating me like Lee Harvey Oswald. You know, give her a little shot, give her a little shot, a little shot. She goes, be that as it may, sir. You will have to check your bag. I go, it's not even my bag. A stranger asked me to bring it onto the flight. And I'm trying to do somebody a solid. And this is what kindness gets at John F. Kennedy Airport? She goes, sir, what's so important that you have to take your bag on? What's in the bag? I go, I could tell you, but you're not gonna understand. She goes, try me. I go, inside the bag is Bitcoin. And she goes, what's Bitcoin? I go, well, let me explain it to you. And about five minutes into the explanation, she was like, 
Just get on the plane. Take your stupid bag on the plane. <laughs>